Thank you so very much. While well, still standing, let's open our Bibles to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. I'm going to reuse Luke chapter 8 to teach the parable of the sower today. Praise God in the highest. Oh, praise him, praise him, praise him. We give him glory. Hallelujah. I'll read from verse number 4. Please let us have our phone switched off. I, I believe that the the ushers will have told you that. We need to have placards at the back, please, ushers. Please do remind me. We need to have them done, Matthew, from next week. So that people can know that they should switch their phones off. In some churches where I go to abroad, as you're coming in, they let you know, switch your phones off. Switch your phones off. Because we understand that people do forget. And man, man will forget. It's natural for man to forget. You get the point? Some bring phones to church and they do forget. It's a culture that we have to evolve. We have to deliberate, intentional, and not correct people from the pulpit. Does that make sense, ushers? Please let's get that done. All right. Luke chapter 8. If, if sound can be helpful, I'll be appreciated. Just leave it as it is. It's, not, it's bad enough, so don't make it worse. Thank you. I appreciate it. Luke chapter 8, verse number 4. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake a parable. He sow and went out to sow in seed. And as he sowed, some fell on the wayside. And it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. Some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit, an hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, that he that has ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying, what might this parable be? And he said, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Please note verse number 11. Now the parable is this. So he explained to them and he said, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil and takes away the word out of the hearts. Out of their hearts, their hearts. So note the interpretation of their hearts. Lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which for a while believe. And in time of temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they which, in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it, bring forth fruit with patience. Praise the Lord. That's verse 15. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for today. We ask you to speak to us. We pray that we will hear your voice. We ask that you would use this word to brood up our hearts and change our lives forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. You may have your sin in God's presence. Praise God. Funny enough, I intend to teach this morning on triple S equation to explain to you how if you want to get results in your life to please study this parable very well. Study this parable very well. It tells you a lot about how to get results in your life. From this parable I can teach you what others will not teach you. The keys to success. The parables, Jesus spoke many things in parables. Many things. So it depends on how you see it. Many people know parables but we do not understand that they are keys. The wisest man that ever lived, Jesus himself, gave us from parables certain um, keys to success, keys to effective living, anything you want to do, they are there. The reason I said that is because if you read the Matthew's version from verse 18 to 23, it tells you that those 
those, those, uh, the good ground bear fruit, 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. The one that fell on the good ground yielded fruit. And the word yielded fruit, for me, means brought forth results. Brought forth results, produced. Produced. So if you see people in the same church, the same nation, the same place, and some yield results and some don't, some succeed, some fail, do not blame anybody, check your soil. And many of us like to blame people for our failures. Oh, we say it's my father because if I had a rich parent, I would not be where I am today. Oh, it's not my father, it's my, it's my cousin, it's my school. I didn't go to a great school. That's not true. Study the parable of the soil. Some yielded result. Some did not yield result. The same sower, the same seed, different outcomes. So if you like, keep blaming people for your misfortune. The same sower, the same seed, different outcomes and that's why for me what's more important is to teach and to, to look into the outcomes more the results how come 10 of you were born the same year the same home the same environment the same village five people excelled but the other five are still struggling could it be because oh of the things they were exposed to could it be because they had no uh no mentor could it be because they were they were not funded or supported by someone that would give them money to do things. That's not true. The results were different, but it could be for uh, re many reasons. And today I'm looking at the parable of the sower to try to explain to you why some succeed and some don't. Why some excel and some don't. Why some yield results and yield foods and some don't. And that's, that's just basic. And it has nothing to do, 20 people went to the same Bible school. I went to Bible school with some people. And some of us succeeded, some failed. Why? Could be, the, the answer is here. Yeah. The answer is here. Yeah. So, and, and in this parable, um, one of the things that I found out in this parable, of course, is that the devil attacks the word. And because he told us the seed is the word. So, this morning I'm struggling because the devil is attacking the word. So, I'm trying to tell the devil, shut up, get up, let me teach the word, let me teach the word. So that I can I can concentrate and the devil will not attack the world. As I'm teaching, somebody is here trying to go there, and I'm like, get out. So you see, it's called distractions. It's called satanic attack. I'm trying to sow the word, and the devil is saying, Don't sow the word, don't show the world, don't change their lives. Let them become in prison forever. And I'm saying, No, I'm gonna show the word. I'm gonna show the word. So I've told uh, Ayo we have to change our first service, we have to be more aggressive, we have to change many things. We're gonna have a new set of ushers. Because the ushers are doing well, by the way, but I want, I want the youth ushers. I'm going to have a new set of people, different things. And it will take us to be very, very spiritual, not, not secular, not, not natural. Spiritual mind. Is that clear? I, I'm backing you. I believe in you a lot. I'm backing you with 100% of my strength. Everything behind me, I'm throwing behind you. Let's reform this church. We must build a community, not just a church. Is that clear? So I'm saying it publicly. So everybody can know that I am right behind you. Right behind you. I'm your spine. So all the things you're going to do, I'm your spine. I'm giving you the strength to go ahead and do it. I want to have worship here that will be a youth expression. I want to have the choir must not sing normally. You will sing differently. Is that clear? You can't just come singing like you're singing usually. No, no, no. That's not youth expression. Is that clear? I want youth expression. Mm -hmm. Youth expression. Youth expression. So I'm sowing seeds now. And some people, will, the seed will germinate. For some it will not. Because they are hard. Is different and it's very important that's why some people succeed some don't and, and i've said it a thousand times and there's nothing i can do there's nothing i can do same environment same environment same people some will just excel some will not there's nothing i can do about it i won't be the one that will make you excel or succeed it's not my fault if you know if you're failing it's not my fault check the same place the same seed the same sewer some people excel some don't some don't it's the soil of your heart now tonight today rather I intend to speak to explain this parable from a different perspective. And I will not close it. I would ask questions and hope that we can take those questions outside this hall and continue our engagement. So it's going to be conversational. So it's not going to be doctrinal. I do not intend to share a doctrine today. I want you to go home to your family, go to your office. Go to your cousins, go to your communities, and start this conversation. Which of these three is the most important? Which of these three is the most important? The seed, the sower, or the soil? 
That's what I want to do. I, I'm not going to tell you which one. So please let me quickly tell you now that I do not intend to stamp my authority on one. What I will do is just explain to you what the three stands for in contemporary terms. Does that make sense? So you actually will then go home and say to yourself, I think the sower is more important than the seed of the soil. Now, Dickness Bukola can say, no, I think for me, the soil is more important than the seed and the sower. So I'm just going to explain to you what the three are and then explain, expect you to decide on your own which one you think is the most important. Does that make sense? Which one you think is the most important? So let's start with the sower. The sower in that passage, of course, is uh, was Jesus. The sower is Jesus. So he said the sower, the sower of the good seed was Jesus. That means we have good sowers and we have bad sowers. You need to understand we have good sowers and we have bad sowers. The sower is anyone who sows seed. All of us here are sowers, and guess what? All of us here are also soils. In different ways, we sow when we drop stuff in the heart of men. We are soils when we receive things from people. Do you get it now? You are a soil. And at the same time, you are a sower. You are a sower when you drop ideas, when you drop things, when you counsel people. And you are a soil when you receive. Like now, I'm sowing, but you are receiving. Tomorrow, you will go and sow what I'm sowing, then that person that is hearing you will become a receiver. So the sower here is a person that sows it. All of us are sowers. And Jesus tell us, told us very clearly, that there was a good sower in that place. The man went out to sow good seeds. So he was saying Jesus here was a good sower who went out to sow good seeds. Does that make sense? We also have bad sowers. In Matthew 13, you'll find from verse 24, he said, a good man went out to sow good seed. Remember that passage? And the enemy came to sow tears. So in that passage, we are good sower and a bad sower. Does that make sense? We are a good sower and a bad sower. The enemy came to sow tears. Tears. And so the enemy sowed tears. The men woke up and said, wait a minute. Lord, did we not sow good seed? We sowed good seed. How come? We're seeing tears here. He said, no, 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 no. An enemy has done this. Meaning the devil can also sow. And in Genesis chapter 3, we found the devil as a sower. When he came to Eve and sowed a bad seed in the heart of Eve. As God said. Remember that occasion? That was the devil operating as what? A sower. Dropping a seed in the heart of who? As God said. It's called suggestive seed. Suggestive seed. So the devil is a sower. God is a sower. You are a sower. So I'm going to ask you which of the three is the most important to you. The sower. The sower. So you need to understand that this word sower does not mean that, oh, it's only God. No, 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 no. We have different kinds of sowers. And there are many of them out there. I wrote here the most powerful sowers on earth. I wrote five. Five most powerful sowers. The first, the preachers. We have good preachers. Oh, we have bad preachers. Oh, yeah. We have good pastors. Oh, we have bad pastors. We have great prophets. Oh, we have false prophets. And we have lying prophets. Remember that lying prophet who saw the seed in the heart of that young prophet? I said, God told me as well. Follow me. And immediately that bad prophet sowed that seed. The young man followed. Follow. So po po prophets, pastors are all sowers. They are all what? Sowers. Does that make sense? So we are all sowers. We all sow. So the five most powerful sowers on earth, I'm going to tell you, the first are the pastors. Because we will so much influence over your life. So much influence. The things we say, and that's why you find people, you saw that man that was jailed just a few days ago, the pastor jailed. How come you rape your own members? It doesn't make sense. That's a terrible sower. Terrible sower. And so we are pastors as what well sowers. The second most powerful sowers were the social media influencers. My God. Today I see young people and I see in Nigeria our values have been destroyed by social media influencers. And you see people that there are people that they follow. And sometimes I wonder the most powerful, the most popular most popular, most powerful social media influencers are also in good seeds. And you don't know that. Haven't you observed it? I, I, I watch a few of those kids and I don't laugh. Because it's all about sex, sensuality, and people are following them. Why are you following? And they are sowing seeds. They are sowing seeds and you are embracing their seeds. They are sowers. They are not sowing values. They are sowers. And we go in there, we can, we can expose ourselves and praise their ideas, embrace their thoughts, 
embrace their words, embrace all this. and they are sowing, they are sowing, they are sowing, and you don't know, and you laugh over it. After a while, that seed germinates, bears fruits. You have sex and sexuality and fornication. Say, why am I doing this? Hey, shut up! You expose yourself to the wrong seeds. They are sowers. You never see them as sowers, but they are sowers. They go out there sowing and sowing and sowing and sowing and sowing. Some so greed, some so bad things, some so lost. You know, say to me, I don't know that I'm going through pastor. Please pray for me, deliver me. I ain't gonna deliver you. Stop watching those stuff. I can't lay hands and lay hands on you. Just stop watching it. What happens? You find that your the thing will not uh, bear fruit. <laughs> it won't bear fruit. They are sowers. We don't see them as sowers. We see them as entertainers. Oh no, they are sowing stuff. They are sowing stuff. And the LGBTQ, they are sowing stuff for children. When you watch movie, they are making man and man kissing at age four. Okay, not normal, not abnormal. So your kids are seeing it and say, "Mommy, I want to kiss a boy." Shut up! Don't kiss a boy. Nobody saw. Somebody saw. While men slept. Oh, we're sleeping. Oh, we're sleeping. And that's why children's church we must spend time there. We're sleeping. They are sowing. We are sleeping, they are sewing. They are sewing, man. Oh, they are sewing everything. Check the curriculum. Check the videos they put up. Check the cartoons you watch. Oh, yeah, they are sewing. Oh, yeah, 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 they are sewing. Why we are what? Eh? Let me hear you. We are snoring and sleeping. Eh, why? They are sewing and busy. You wake up one day, you see your daughter. Is this my daughter? Yes, mom. How old did this to you? You did. How? You opened up the TV for me to watch. And they sold so much, and they know there's something called parental control. They are sowers. From today, begin to see them as sowers. Not any seeds you have embraced, you have embraced in your heart. No matter, I'm going to preach now. No matter how good your heart is, if there are so many bad seeds there. <laughs> oh God! That, you know this scenario, eh? Pastor Chanel, I'm going to paint scenarios. Is that can a bad sower sow good seed? Eh? We debated in my office. Can a good sower sow bad seed? <laughs> That's I say, you guys will go and continue the conversation. Hey. Because I will tell you what it means to be a good sower. Because you don't even understand it. What it means to be a good sower. If you say yes, that means you don't understand the nature of good and bad sower. Can Jesus sow a bad seed? <laughs> the good man, out of the good treasures of his heart, brings forth good things. It's not possible for a good man to sow bad seed. It's not okay. I'm already giving answer. It's not possible. And I said I won't give answers. The preacher in me is saying no, I will give answers. It's not possible for a bad sower to sow good seed. The devil can never sow good things. Because that's who he is. You as a preacher understands it. That's who he is. The sower. The third most powerful sower is Satan and demons himself. They, they are still there. Let them stay there. They will be there. We are, we are moving ahead. They should have moved forward. The devil and Satan. Satan is a sower. The fourth one, guess who? Teachers. That's why you must send your children to good schools. Teachers. When they teach them in class, you don't know what they are sowing. Somebody sowed a lot of information into your mind, into your heart, about the field you are in today. Teachers are also great sowers. Am I right? Teachers, lecturers, they sow values, not just sow education. We keep thinking it's only education. If you have a good lecturer, as he's giving you education, he's giving you patience and values along with it. Am I right? Tell you, don't do this. Tell you, don't cheat. He's telling you, have you read? No, go and read. You need to read to pass my exam. Then we all say, come and sleep with me. I'll give you the mark. That's a bad sower. Saying, you don't need to work hard to succeed in life. So you leave that school, going out to work, saying, my lecturer for four years, all my lecturers sold bad ideas into my heart. Now for you to succeed in Nigeria, you don't need to work hard. Exactly. So just sleep with your boss, sleep with all this. So you keep doing that because somebody told you that's how it works. No, and that teacher says, no, you need to work hard. If you don't work hard, you don't succeed. And they tell you that. So, okay, wait a minute. I need to work hard to succeed. Yes. So you see, hard work has not punishment. Only Nigerians say hard work has punishment. I'm telling you, I have many staff. When they to work hard, they see me as punishing them. And I'm like, go to China. It's seen as pleasure. It's seen as work. We see it as punishment. They're punishing us to come to the office early, to close late. They're punishing us. Ah. <laughs> oh Lord, my, my, I love I love this country. 
Hard work is punishment. Hard work is punishment. They're punishing us. Praise God. Parents, the last. They said they call it home training. Yes or no? Home training. Parents, they're also very important. Extremely important. Parents are very what? Important. They teach us things. And that's why people have said, of all these five sowers, which one is the most powerful? We don't know. You are going to look at which ones, which ones have formed your character today. Look through. No, 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 just think about it. So when parents ignore their role and expect pastors to play the role, society collapses. You've forgotten that Anna gave robe to Samuel. Eli gave knowledge to Samuel. It's supposed to be combined. As Eli is teaching you spiritual, Anna must teach you from home. How come all the Annas have abandoned their jobs and they want the pastors to do all the work? Samuel was growing up under the desk of Hannah and who? Eli. Eli was giving spiritual. Hannah was giving parental. Parents have abandoned their job. They push their children how to go and make money at all costs. Parents also sow values. What do you tell your child when somebody gives, an uncle comes in and gives 10,000 euros? So what do you say? Thank you. I have parents in this church that when they bring their kids to office, to my office, they immediately say, oh yeah, greet daddy, greet daddy, how do you greet daddy? They force them to prostrate. Why some don't even say that? They will say, high five to daddy. You are teaching them bad things without you knowing. They are prostrate, prostrate. Parents, where did you see this narrow? The parents will tell, tell the child, do not steal in school. Parents, what are you doing? You are sowing seeds. It's called values. <laughs> values. Values. Am I communicating? Are you getting something? So, we have good sowers and bad sowers. Number two, seed. Seeds. Seeds are powerful and define who we are. Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. If you want to know me, check the seed I breed. Seeds breed fruits. Genesis 1. When God made everything on earth. He said, let the herb yielding seed. Is a seed in it that yields the fruit. Every fruit you see is coming from a seed. Yes or no? Every fruit starts with a seed. No fruit, no tree. Just breaks, boom, starts. There must be a seed sown. It becomes a tree, then bears fruit. Yes or no? So seeds are what? Powerful. By their fruits, we shall know them. By their seeds, we shall know the fruit. Is somebody listening? By their fruits, we shall know them. Every fruit you see is a product of a seed. If you see those false prophets, by their fruits, we know them. Let's check also the seeds sown in their hearts. Am I communicating? Seeds are very powerful. Sowers are very powerful. That's why the devil attacked the seed, not the sower. The enemy came to pick the seed from the heart. The devil does not want us to preach the word. The enemy is attacking our church. This church, they preach the truth. Let them not grow. Because if they grow, society will be better. Oh, the church across the street, they preach fresh. Let them grow. We're not threatened. And you underestimate seed. You just look at a physique because you don't, you're not wise. You are a product of the seed sown in your heart. So you better go out and get the right seeds inside you. Get the right seeds inside you. Seeds are what? Powerful! If the Bible calls the word of God seed, look chapter 8 verse 11, and the seed is the word of God. Ah, ah, very simple scripture. And the seed is the word of God. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And the seed is the word of God. Today we're in a mess because one devil sowed the wrong seed into one heart called Eve. As God said, and then she embraced that seed, that thought, that idea. Do you know how many marriages have, have been destroyed? Marriages. It does go wish to their husband or their wife. You are taking that from your husband. Yeah, I can't take it too. And then the foolish guy said, uh -huh. You are trying, you know. You're taking that from me. I can't take it. That's true. I won't take it anymore from you. Uh -huh. Somebody just sold a you didn't think deeply. Why? Why? Why won't I take it? I'll take it. You don't take it. We are different, Abby. You can't take it. It's your business. Now we take it. <laughs> Leave me alone. Let me. Eh. Me, I'm taking it. You can't take it. What's my business? My choice is to. I will take it where. 
you're taking it. I am taking it. <laughs> it's a devil. Showing the seed, you are taking it. What am I taking? Nothing, no. <laughs> Nothing. They magnify it as if it's big. What am I taking? No, I won't take it too. What is it? <laughs> you are taking it. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> are you with me? Seed. Murmurers, so seed. Slanderers, so seed. Gossips, so seed. It's just so seed. Seeds are very powerful. Very powerful. Seeds breed fruit. Seeds are determined by the sowers. Yes or no? Matthew chapter 12, verse 35. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart sowed good seed. A bad man out of the bad treasure sows bad seed. So the most powerful seeds are what? There is there. Evil things. They bring forth evil things. So the most powerful seeds are what? Number one, ideas. The devil knows how to drop ideas into our hearts. The good, the bad, the ugly. Yes or no? Ideas. Don't think it's just... No. Stop. Number two, word of God. The word is a seed. I can give you 10, but I just want to choose five. The word is a seed. So please, I beg you, in my house, I have Bible on tape. I have Bible audio. I just like to hear the word. It cannot do me harm. There's no way in this world you can be wrong with the word. Just if you don't know it, read your Bible, pray every day. Bible study, attend, attend. We beg you to come to hear the word for one hour on a Sunday. The meaning week, you are hearing other seeds. Just imagine the week. How much seeds are being sowed in your heart? Consciously and unconsciously. But you should go to a place where consciously you are receiving the word. Because you can only, be, can only breed fruits based on the seeds on your inside. Am I right? You cannot breed beyond your seed. You cannot breed beyond your seed. If I sow guava, I cannot reap orange. So you cannot expect to sow spiritual, to reap, to, to breed spiritual fruit if you are receiving unspiritual seeds. I don't know, am, am I communicating? You better love yourself enough to protect your heart. Love yourself enough to what? Eh. Breed, that's why whenever I'm depressed, I listen to different songs. Though. One of the songs I listen to is Ebenezer Obey. Last week I was listening to Obey and I just sat there for a minute and I noticed in that particular song on Apple, he must have praised, you know, he's praised about four or five billionaires. And I sat back and said, Where are they today? They're no more found. God just inspired me, you see. When he was praising them, the billionaires in town. I'm like, ah, Where are they today? I said, Where are those people he was praising them today? Nothing sometimes is permanent. Be contented with your life. Don't destroy your life. Greed will destroy you. Don't let them sow seeds of greed, 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 greed. What God has done for you, you are still complaining. See what you've done for me. Eh? You don't have to sing to that. Do you see how you set me free? You don't have to thank him. You are greedy because somebody have sown seeds of greed, 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 greed. greed. <laughs> the word is a seed thoughts are seeds Jesus said that thoughts are seeds, evil thoughts come from our heart Matthew 15 suggestions are seeds books that you read are seeds if you check my library you find Christian books check your library you find other books what kind of books do you read those books are people that all thoughts are dropping thoughts Authors are dropping thoughts. Authors are dropping thoughts. What kind of music do you listen to? Do you get the point now? All those things are what seeds without you knowing it. Are we killing? Are we killing? One day you go and kill him. Dagger, 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 dagger. You hear dagger, dagger, dagger. 25 days of your life. One day you go and pick dagger and say, Where's well, dagger, dagger, dagger? It is true. The music you are listening to, they are seeds. That's like the worship music I listen to in my house. I, Obodo, I love them. Because once we sing here, I'm more entertainment driven, centered, centric. I want to just worship him. Music you listen to are seeds. They're seeds. Am I right? They're seeds. 
So be careful. So I don't, I don't want to talk about this. So what? Am I right? And the seed. The third, the soil. The soil. I want to now paint the scenarios for you. The soil. What's the soil? The soil is the state of your heart. Your heart. The Bible speaks about your heart. The soil is where the seed goes to. Yes or no? The soil goes out to sow a seed in soil. We had wayside soil. We had rocky soil. We had good soil. Everything there. Yes or no? Now let's now agree that all soils are good soils. Let's just agree for that scenario. All soils are good soils. Now the seed that is sown there would determine the fruit the soils come out with. And the best soils are which soils? Teenagers, teenage soils. Children's soils. They are still virgin soils. Let's go there and sow the right seed. Let's catch them young. Let's catch them young. Because I'm a few people here. Eh? And I don't set in our ways. Don't try to not put good seed there. Now I'm struggling. Because there's so many tons there that my seeds are, I'm sowing are, are choking. <laughs> because you're already, you're setting your ways, man. You're setting your ways. So the seeds I'm sowing now, uh, I ain't taking that. I, I want some money. Uh-huh. But the child, the child is still a bit virgin. I can still sow the right seed there. So as it grows up, train up a child the way it should go. So when it grows up, it will not depart from it. Seed, seed. Soil, soil. There are different soils. We have the natural art soil. We have the spiritual and godly art soil. We have the evil and wicked art soil. For me, I'm not talking about the wayside soil. Let us start with <clears throat> natural, without God, without the devil. <clears throat> the pure heart. To the pure, all things are pure. That's what is now saved. So the heart is now open like the Berean Christians to receiving the word of God. Because now I'm saved, I have a pure heart. The evil is the diabolic and satanic heart. The one that the devil is pretending over. Satanic heart. The heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Remember that scripture? God said, listen, I'm not going to destroy man anymore. Why? For his heart is evil continually. <laughs> After God said, these people, they can't change. <laughs> oh God. Even God gave up on man in that passage. These people, their heart is not the same. They can't change. What I would do, I would just start a new person, Abraham. Here now, I will now have a covenant. I will now raise a generation through him. But man, no, 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 no. Their heart is evil continually. Evil. And wicked. So we have different kinds of hearts. Does that make sense? So you need to look at it very well to the pure things are pure. <clears throat> now, let me now give you the possible scenarios. My time is almost up. Scenario number one. Let me give you like four. And in my scenarios, Pastor Chanel, I don't want to look at, I could do seven scenarios. I you are now discussing this scenario yesterday. But I want to do scenarios based on two of the variables. Just the seed, sorry, the sower and the soil. So I'm not going to use the seed as a variable. Let's just use the sower and the soil. Because we have all agree that a good sower can produce, will produce a good seed. So let's create a scenarios of variables for seeds. Is that clear? And bad sower we not produce good seed. Is that clear? Is that clear? So if a bad person is sowing a seed and you say, oh, I think it's good, it's because your soil is probably good. Because a pure person can be naive enough that when a bad person is sowing a seed, it's because the person is honest and naive, he's taking it as genuine. Does that make sense? But the person that is sowing at ill intention is still bad. You may think he's sowing a good seed. No, no, no. It's bad seed he's sowing. Suggesting that he should fight uh, Pastor Turayo. Suggesting. But because your own heart is pure, you are seeing it as and he just told me I didn't know that it was bad. Uh, you are pure. So all things are pure. But the person sowing that seed is sowing a terrible seed. Does that make sense? Because the person is a terrible person. Terrible person. Hmm? Am I communicating? So, scenario one, a bad sower, the devil on good soil. Let's put that scenario. Wrong seed on good soil. Wrong seed on good Remember the parable of the sower? The second parable? Because in that parable, you find three parables aligned to each other. The first one, the emphasis was on the seed. Second one, the emphasis was on the sower. I didn't want to read it again yesterday. Jesus gave the parable of the sower. He now gave the parable of the tears. If you see the emphasis almost immediately in Matthew 13, the emphasis of the second, Christ quickly balanced his message. In giving a message, ah, let me balance it all. Because this one, the emphasis is on seed, it's on soils. Okay, me, different soils. The wayside soil. Ah, let me balance it. He now gave a second parable. 
But even though the soils are good, you can have a bad soil. Somebody come to sow bad seed. So immediately balance it for us. So we can say, okay, okay, okay. You see, about the third parable, three parables all around the seed, the sower, and the soil. I don't have too much time, I'll explain to you. So the emphasis of the second one is on the sower. Because there are two sowers, the good one and the bad one. Men slept. He sowed on the same soil. In the first parable, emphasis on what? The soils. Good soil, stony ground soil, thorny soil, different soils, but the same soil, the same seed. So you can see Christ painting his own scenarios for us. So let us also paint our own scenarios. Scenario one, a bad soil on good soil. Look at them, what will happen? People that sow seeds of discord. Eh? No, no. People that sow seeds of discord on a, in a good soil. Proverbs 6, verse 19. That they just want to divide the church. Just discord. Evil thoughts in a good soil. Matthew 15. Satan deceived Eve. So that's a bad sower on a good soil. Is that clear? So please be careful everything you eat on the outside. Be careful with the garbage you get. And even me, as good as my, I try to make my soil, I, I work hard. People have sowed bad seeds in my heart about other people, and I didn't know. I only knew months after I took actions. Ah, that guy didn't know. If I had known, I would not have removed that girl. I won't have fought that guy. He sowed bad seeds in my heart, and I believed it. Why? I believed the person. Every time I made that wrong decision, is a person I'm believing. So because I believe the person, the information I just take, hook, line, and... Because I don't think the person can be telling me a bad thing. I didn't know the person came to spoil somebody else. And the person tells me what I want to hear. What everybody wants to hear is about himself. Daddy, that person spoke bad about you. Eh? What did I do? Uh -huh. So naturally, naturally, and it's a bad sower. Good soil. Am I communicating? Is somebody listening to me? Because Christ said, either as a hear, let him hear. Is there Matthew 13? Second scenario, a good sower on bad soil. Good seeds on bad soil. What's a bad soil? Thorny heart, all those things. You can point now. Wayside soil, thorny, thorny heart, cares of this world. That's what the Bible calls bad soil. That's why it's not good enough. No matter how much good word you are sowing, you can determine the outcome. Is there. So I've not given you this scenario so you can begin to look at the outcomes. You on your own think of the possible outcomes. Possible scenarios and outcomes. Number three, good sower and good soil. Fruits come in 30, 60, 100 fold return. That as a result matter, but it's all come in different levels. If I bear 30 fold fruit, am I unfruitful? Because you are bearing 100 fold return, does it make me a bad person? Exactly. Don't make that mistake ever in your life. Because people say, oh, hey, he has more money than you, so I have money. <laughs> I get the point now. So don't say, at least I'm fruitful. You, you can bear 100 fold, I'm bearing 30 fold. I'm still, I'm fruitful. So let's be careful how we make the person with 100 fold return better than the person with 30 fold return. As long as I am bearing results. Is that clear? We're bearing results. Futa is bearing results. We're changing lives. Oh, that other place, they have more. Mm, we are bearing fruits. We are bearing results. We have possible out positive outcomes. We're changing lives. Maybe not in numbers like other people, but we're changing lives. Hello? So just make sure your ground can yield results. Is that clear? The, the, the difference in results is not the emphasis in that passage. As I said, there was a 30. There was a 60, there was a 100. So the emphasis is not in the different results, but that it yielded results. It brought forth outcomes. Praise God. The last thing I know is bad sower on a bad soil. Am I right? Bad sower on a bad soil. Terrible outcomes and results. Of course, gossip sowing hatred. Imagine a man with a vengeful heart. Somebody now so hatred there. The man already is a hateful person, vengeful. But that person now so hated. <laughs> Imagine a person that's already under, um, I'm looking for something, uh, sensual sexuality, uh, um, um, what's it called? Uh, possessed by the demon of lust. You now go and put another uh, seed of lust. 
you have killed the person. <laughs> the person already greedy. Now go and plant more to say go and look for money. The person will kill his mother. He will do ritual killing. Because he's already greedy there. Now go and plant more in love of money. He's already greedy. You now plant love of money there again. Bad soil. Or in what? Bad soil. So I want to stop here and leave you to make your conclusions and take a position. Which of the three do you think is most powerful, most important? To all here, there will be different things. This is the soil. Your heart. So you can nurture it. You can protect it. So you don't let any bad stuff come in. Oh, is it the sower? You as a sower and those you listen to. Those you expose yourself to. Or is it the seed? The kind of seeds you love to hear. Which of the three do you think is the most powerful? Think about it. What I'm saying today is about your life. Listen, let me, let me twist it for you. Let me turn it around. If you want to yield results in 2024, what should you do? Based on this message. Take care of the seeds that goes to your heart. Be careful the soul you listen to. Because you cannot yield results beyond your seeds. Seeds will breed fruits. So what kind of fruit do you want to yield this year? Go and embrace the seeds. I'm not saying money, because you like money. That's love of money again. <laughs> what kind of fruits? And it says in Luke chapter 11, 8, verse 15, with patience. The fruits came with patience. Read it. Luke 8, 15. When we say, he said, with patience, the fruits came. Fruits will just come in a hurry. Be patient, because if it's God's word, it will tell you, be patient. So this message can change and transform. You see, brought forth fruit with what? With what? I know they won't tell you that's true, Larry. They won't tell you that. It didn't bring, God's word will not bring forth fruit in a hurry. With patience. I've just given you a million dollar counsel about how and the keys to yield results. If you want to yield results in your life, read the parable of the sower well. Get the right sower into your life. Embrace the right seeds into your heart. Protect your heart. You will yield results based on those two or three ingredients. I'm not going to tell you which of the three is important, most important. I want us to continue the conversation. Outside this place, go and talk. In the communities you belong to, go online. I posted a video there. Go online. Go and create engagement. Let's share. Let's discuss. Let's learn from others. And let's begin to be wiser. Because Christ said to us, a wise man is known by how they embrace his word. That I just shared with his word. How you embrace it. Because I was the wisest man. We tell you, don't forget there are bad souls. How do I discern a bad soul? Don't forget there are bad souls. Don't forget the error of Eve embracing a bad soul and a bad seed. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Rise to your feet. Put your hands together for Jesus. Have you been blessed? Have you been blessed? Put your hands together once more. Now, bow your heads for a minute and just, for just one minute and ask God to protect your heart and to guide you and lead you to good sowers. And that this year you'll be very careful the seeds you embrace. There are different seeds in, that we pick up every day. We pick up seeds everywhere we go to. We pick up different, different seeds. We just go out every day and we pick up different seeds. We pick up different seeds on social media, everywhere we go to. We just pick it up and we embrace them and we let them influence us. I don't want to become something else that I'm not meant to be. I'll be very careful the seeds I pick, the seeds I pick, seeds that, that tells me about friendship. Seeds, seeds, seed will bring fruit. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Just ask him to help you. Ask him to help you. Ask him. Protect your heart and nurture it. Say, God, I need you to help me. I need you to help me. I'll be most more careful this year. I'll be more careful this year with the seeds I embrace. I will protect my heart. I will make sure it's pure. To the pure, all things are pure. I will not judge men easily. I will not embrace everything I hear. I will discern. I will discern. I will spend the next six months hearing the word. I will spend the next one year. I will understand secrets of keys and keys of the kingdom. I will emphasize them. I will, I will expose myself to those things. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name.
Put your hands in your chest as a symbol of your heart. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I consecrate my heart, circumcise my heart. I ask, Lord, you preserve me, you protect me. Help me to nurture the soil of my heart in the name of Jesus. I embrace your word as truth. I embrace your word as seeds. Help me, Lord, to yield the right fruits in Jesus' name. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' name I pray. Put those hands together. Hallelujah.